Hello class 12s. Today I am going to explain you all chapter 19 and chapter 20. Okay. Now I am going to start with chapter 20 that is case study. Uh, economic regional economic development okay now uh, now remember this is uh, the important points that you have to uh, remember from this chapter and this is all according to the reduced syllabus okay the first thing is like uh, meaning of this word development now development implies overall improvement in economy social and political conditions of a society that is important that's a definition and it also um, needs conservation and improvement of the environment also okay so it's not only the society not only the political situation and the political conditions and the social environment of a society needs to be improved but also the environment is has to be laid emphasis okay so that's the meaning of this word development and what is the reason for development okay uh, there I have uh, chosen three points out here reasons for development is because of increase in population growing demand of food and the basic necessities and even improving the general standard of living of the people you just remember that okay then you come to uh, the next uh, topic that is what do we mean by planning region Okay, now planning region out here is a self-created living organisms having a lifetime of its own that supports the life in that particular region and also unifies the force that enables the region to be uh, unified or developed. Okay, then characteristic features, uh, this planning region neither, uh, should neither be too big nor small, boundaries should be flexible and social harmony should be there. You just pick up these two points. Okay, three points, oh, sorry, three points out here and the meaning of this planning regions. Okay, now uh, there are different planning regions, macro, micro and meso. You just remember this planning region, you don't have to go in detail. Then you come to the next topic that is multi-level planning. Okay, what do you mean by multi-level planning? Uh, planning that has been done for varieties of regions which together forms a system and a subordinate system is called a planning region. Uh, under this, the country has to be divided into smaller territory units and this unit which has been divided uh, depends on the size of the country, the geographical location and the culture. Okay? Uh, then this planning region of a country has been divided into first level planning or the planning that has been done in the central uh, level. Okay? Second level planning that is on the state level, district level planning, block level planning and panchayat level planning. So this is the categories of multi-level planning that has been done in the center, in the state, in the district, even in the block and in the panchayat region. Okay. Then you, then you start with the case studies. Okay. Under case studies, there are three regions that you have to study about. Okay. Now let me start with Chhattisgarh. Uh, you know, Chhattisgarh locational setting is very, very important. So just remember, Chhattisgarh is. Uh, 26th state of India and that has been formed on the 1st of November 2000 okay, and it's been carved out of Madhya Pradesh. Latitudinal extent is 18 degrees north to 24 degree north. Longitude is 80 degree east to 84 degree east. This has to be remembered. And the neighboring states of this Chhattisgarh is Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. And the total area is 1,36,034 square kilometers. This figure, remember this, okay? And please remember the latitude and the longitude. Uh, along with this, uh, what you have to study is the different economic activities of the people living in Chhattisgarh, okay? The first important activities of the people living in Chhattisgarh is mining, okay? So, um, Chhattisgarh has large deposits of various minerals. Uh, some of the minerals that has been found out here is iron ore, limestone, dolomite, coal and bauxite. And beside this, there are minerals like garnet, marble, diamond, tin also been found. It is the second largest producer of coal. And the important coal fields are Ramkela, Tatapani, Rampura. And another one is the Korba fields in the Korba district, which is the one of the largest coal fields in Chhattisgarh. Okay? And uh, another important thing that you have to remember is that the coal that has been, you know, um, extracted in the coal fields of Chhattisgarh is being supplied to the Belai steel plant. Uh, the next mineral is iron ore and this area is the third largest producer. Important places is the Bastar and the Durg district 
an important field is Bailadila and Dali. Okay. Another important activities is farming. Uh, there are a large number of crops that has been grown in Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh is mostly famous for curry season, cropping in the curry season. Okay. An important crop is rice. Others are maize, wheat, groundnut pulses. Okay. And Chhattisgarh is also known as the rice bowl of India. Okay. And the reason behind it is not because it produces the largest amount of rice, but the main reason is because it has been drained by river Manadi and, and its tributaries which supplies them with plenty of water which helps in the growth of rice as you know it. Rice is a water loving plant. Okay. And important places where rice has been grown is the Basta region, Durg and Bilaspur. I've just picked up important points so just go through this. Okay. Another important thing that you have to remember is that uh, one of the most important minerals, okay, uh, you know, that has been uh, found as I told you is coal, okay, and Bailadilla is a very important coal field this, which has been found in Chhattisgarh and it's one of the largest mechanized fields in Asia and it also provides a high grade ore and exports it to China and Japan. Okay, now I missed out this point under minerals only, please uh, refer to this. Other minerals beside iron ore and uh, coal and you know other minerals are bauxite which is found in Bilaspur and Durg, limestone in Bastar and Bilaspur, dolomite in Bastar and Bilaspur, diamond in Raipur district. Okay, then comes to agriculture, farming, which I, I think I just missed out. Okay. Then you come to next is silk industry, another important activities of the people living in Chhattisgarh is uh, sericulture, that is rearing of the silkworm, okay. Then <clears throat> silk industry has been associated with the term called reeling, reeling is a process where uh, thread like fiber has been taken out from the cocoons by boiling it in water. And another important thing about this silk industry is that it provides employment opportunities to a large number of people living in Chhattisgarh. And again, the same places where it's been found is Bastar and Bilaspur. Okay, then that is all about uh, Chhattisgarh. Then you come to uh, the next important case study is Bangalore. Okay, then which why it is known as an electronic capital of India. Okay. So electronic industry, now electronic industry covers a range of products like televisions, telephones, computers, etc. And Bangalore is known as an electronic capital of India, okay. And the reason behind what helps uh, Bangalore to set up with large number of uh, electronic industries, it is also known as an IT capital, okay, is incentive that has been provided by the state government and the central government. Uh, next point is the strategic location of Bengaluru, okay, that is in the middle of the peninsula or India and it's well connected with roads and railways and there are lots of M MNCs, MNCs out in as multinational companies which are ready for investment. So that's the reason behind why large number of electronic industries have been found in Bangalore and it's also known as the electronic capital of India, okay. That much about uh, Bangalore electronic industry. The next one is the growth of the Haldiai port. Okay. Now you already know uh, Haldia is one of the most important port that you find in the east coast. And the main purpose behind why this port was being constructed is to ease the congestion or the pressure that has been there in the port of Kolkata. Okay. So, the, this port was being developed to release congestion in the port of Kolkata. It has been located at the confluence of the Haldia and the Hooghly River. Um, important oil refinery and fertilizer factories are also being found over there with petrochemical industries being set up. It's well connected with Haldia and Kharagpur through railways. And important items of trade are mineral oil, petroleum products and uh, like the port, port of Kolkata, Haldiai port also has a very large hinterland, okay. And hinterland, you just remember it's a land which has been served by the port, okay. These are the important things that you have to study from this uh, Haldiai port, okay. So with this, uh, I come to the end of this chapter, regional economic development, that is chapter 20. 
okay now let me start with chapter 19 that is tourism industry okay now again tourism industry also i'm going through this reduced syllabus okay the first one is the definition of this word called tourism okay what do you mean by this people do have different ways of you know defining tourism okay so uh, tourism means traveling to relatively undisturbed or uncontaminated natural areas with the objective of studying admiring and enjoying its scenery wild animals plants okay the flora and the fauna as well as uh, studies about the past and the present cultures okay this is the definition uh, growth of tourism so root of tourism can be traced it is through pilgrimage so tourism actually started with pilgrimage pilgrimage means movement of people okay going from one place to another for religious purposes uh, so pilgrimage was an important factor in promoting industry this is one of the fastest growing industry generates large amount of employment adds well to the country you have more paid holidays organized tourism in india began in 1950s indian tourism growth is due to foreign tourists but september 11 2001 incident that is the blasting of this uh, twin tower by the terrorist uh, had a very uh, you know negative impact on tourism industry not only in our country but throughout the world it, it was during that time you know uh, the tourist inflow in india was very very less okay uh, especially uh, for a period of one year by 2002 again tourism picked up by september october tourism again picked up in the country uh, the, but that was a that uh, terrorist attack in the twin towers had a negative impact on tourism industry and india was also been affected by that okay besides this another important uh, factor that led to uh, less flow of international tourists in the year 2001 was the afghan war tension that was being taken place in kashmir and riots in gujarat okay that also led to the decline in the tourist arrivals okay and another important thing that you have to remember about this tourism is metropolitan cities have a greater potential for tourist growth okay so these are the important points characteristic features okay then you come to the positive impact of tourism now the positive impact tourism has it boosts the economy of our country provides employment opportunities it multiplies effect like money spent by the tourists helps to generate the future business for the business sorry it also develops in infrastructures there are direct benefits to the hotels hotel shops transportation services and entertainment venues etc so these are the positive impact of tourism along with the positive impact it also has a negative impact uh, the first important is that it has an adverse effect on the environment the place becomes congested it leads to pollution so you have noise pollution air pollution water pollution that can places there is political unrest and violence there is also shortage of drainage uh, drinking water lack of proper infrastructure is also there and it also leads to rapid industrialization and industrialization and urbanization okay so that's a negative impact then you come to ecotourism there's another concept of ecotourism uh, catering for holiday makers and natural environment without damaging it so ecotourism means uh, you know uh, visiting places uh, by people okay making use of the natural environment but not damaging the environment is called ecotourism measures for the development of ecotourism business and development organization should work together to grow ecotourism builds environment and cultural awareness and provides direct financial benefits for conservation okay so you have to remember the ecotourism and measures for the development of ecotourism and important place of tourist visits okay uh, you don't have to study in detail okay they have just asked you to one is the natural uh, region that is the himalayan areas uh, the natural region why i pick up this himalayan region is because it has a lofty peak snow clad mountains green valleys turbulent swift flowing rivers difference in flora and fauna you have different activities taking places like trekking hiking okay uh, skiing and all that uh, and important places in the uh, himalayan regions for tourist visits are srinagar areas of Jammu and Kashmir, certain area, other regions of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal, that is Dalhousie and all those places, even Sikkim and Darjeeling, okay. 
so important places there. And then come to another one is the cultural region. Uh, under the cultural region, you have the plains of North India where uh, this region is known for its culture. Uh, so picked up Uttar Pradesh where you have a mixture of Hindu and Islamic culture and important regions in Uttar Pradesh where you have a mixture of this cultures and important places are Vrindavan, Varanasi known for its Hindu culture, okay and Agra, Lucknow, Aligarh known for its Islamic culture, Sarnath which is also known for famous for its Buddhist religion, okay. So this are the important areas that comes under the cultural region and important places under the natural region you can say in any I've picked a few places you can mention any uh, Himalayan region or the foothills of the Himalayas. So these are the important topics that you have to do in tourism okay. So with this the tourism chapter is also over. Now please remember these are all reduced syllabus. I'm going through the reduced syllabus. Thank you.